Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. What a delight it is to be with you here once again at Bible Tract Echoes. Yesterday, our Bibles were open to Leviticus chapter 16, a passage about the Day of Atonement and the rituals that were part of that day. And once again, I'm going to ask you, if you can, to reach over, get your Bible, and turn back to Leviticus chapter 16. We want to uh, really understand a little more about what's found here. So get your Bible out. Get something on which you can jot some notes. I'm going to be giving six words, all beginning with the letter C today, that I think will help you later on to really grasp and better remember the things that are here in Leviticus chapter 16. But if you have that piece of paper and pen handy, along the way you can jot down some contact information so that we can send to you a free sample packet of some gospel tracts. I'm going to talk about that a little more here in a minute. But Leviticus 16 is where God gives the details for the most important day of the Jewish calendar. Now, the most important day was not Passover, although that was important. What's described here is the Day of Atonement. Now, why was this day more important than any other? It's due to the fact that on this day, it was when their sins, the sins of the people, were paid for by the shedding of blood. And again, it's called the Day of Atonement. That word atonement is used in chapter 16 a total of 12 times. The word word atonement means to cover. On this day, God would cover over the sins of the people. The, the animal's blood was shed, and it was covering there, and God would not look upon the sins of the people anymore. The Jewish people called this day Yom Kippur. Now, the word Kippur means to ransom or to redeem. This day is a picture of the day of salvation for you and I. Now, I have received Jesus Christ as my Savior. I have been redeemed. If you have been redeemed, this chapter is a picture of our salvation day. Now, let me give you today a quick look at what happened on the day of atonement. Get your Bible out. Get something on which you can write, please. A moment ago, I mentioned the gospel track packet I want to send to you. Now, that packet contains 41 different gospel tracks. The word gospel means good news. A gospel track tells the good news of salvation. There is only one salvation method in the world. It's through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He came to give his life a ransom, a payment price for the sins of the world. He came and gave his life, shed his blood to any and all who believe on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. I can't change the gospel message, but I can just come at the gospel message from different vantage points, and that's what a gospel track does. A gospel track explains in written format God's plan of salvation. The one in my hand right now is entitled, He is Not Here. He is not here. It's a reference to the fact that Christ is no longer dead and buried in that tomb. This is a critical part of the gospel story. Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day. Here is the synopsis of this track. It's going to explain that Jesus is, first of all, the right man to die for our sins. He is the risen man to prove he can give eternal life, but it ends by declaring that he, Jesus, must be the received man for his payment of Calvary to become viable for you or anybody that message, that gift of salvation must be received personally. You can't get it by having a baptismal ceremony as a child. You must personally receive Jesus Christ as Savior. He is not here. Just one of the tracks in the sample packet. At the end of our 
time here together. My announcer will come back on. He will give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Please have pen and paper ready. Give us that. We'll send you the sample packet free of charge. Or you can just go to our web address, which is BibleTracksInc.org. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible's open, let me look here. Leviticus 16, beginning at verse 11. Here's what the Bible says. And Aaron shall bring the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself, and shall make an atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bullock of the sin offering, which is for himself. And he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from off the altar before the Lord, and his hands full of sweet incense beaten small, and bring it within the veil of the Holy of Holies. And he shall put the incense upon the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of the incense may cover the mercy seat that is upon the testimony, and he, that he shall not die. And he shall take the blood of the bullock and sprinkle it with his finger upon the mercy seat eastward, and before the mercy seat shall he sprinkle of the blood with his finger seven times. Stop, please, right there. Now, there are six key things to notice here in Leviticus 16. These six keys are going to help us understand the basics of all that transpired on the Day of Atonement. Now, please notice that all six words begin with the letter C, like in the word cat. Are you ready? Number one, the word is connection. Connection based upon verses one and two. The giving of the details for the cleansing of the people and of the tabernacle were given immediately upon the sinful acts of Aaron's two older sons sons. Those sons had brought the wrong incense, did the wrong worship before God, and God killed them. And due to that, there had to be a cleansing. Second word is the word cost. Cost. Being forgiven of their sins was a gift to the Jewish people, but it still nonetheless was costly. Animals had to die. Blood had to be shed. My third word is the word close. Clothes. Now, this passage talks about the clothes worn by the high priest, the clothes he had to wear to go into the Holy of Holies. Now, these clothes were not his typical glorious high priestly clothes with all the jewels and so on them. On this day, he had to take on himself very plain clothes, actually the clothes of a servant, the clothes of a household slave. He had to put those on, taking off his priestly, high priestly garments and putting on the, the clothing of a servant. Word number one so far is the word connection. Word number two is the word cost. Word number three is clothes. Word number four now is the word cloud. The high priest had to bring burning coals from the altar before the Lord. Then he put incense on the coals, and this made a cloud there, at fog, if you would, in the Holy of Holies. Now, why? Well, you see, inside the Holy of Holies was the glory of God, the Shekinah glory. And this incense cloud made it possible for Aaron to be in the presence of God without fully seeing the glory of God. If he had seen that, he would have died. So thus, we have this incense being offered there on the coals and the cloud being formed. Word number five is the word conduct. There were a number of animals to kill, offerings to burn, blood to be sprinkled, and more as part of the conduct, the actions that took place here all according to God's word. My last word is the word continuation continuation. Leviticus 16 ends with a reminder that this set day every year, the Day of Atonement, had to occur over and over and over once a year on a very particular day. Now, here is what happened on the Day of Atonement in its most basic form. The high priest alone entered into the Holy of Holies a total of three times. This was the only day of the year he could actually go in there. If he went in any other time, he was dead. He went in the first time with that special incense. He did this after he had taken off, as I said before, his glorious high priestly clothes, washed himself, and put on the clothes of a servant. 
The second time he went into the Holy of Holies, he took the blood of the sin offering for himself and his family. You see, he had to be fit. He had to be without sin so he could bring in the next offering. So time number three that the high priest went into the Holy of Holies, he took the blood of another offering. This one was for the sins of the people. It was going to cleanse them and the, and the tabernacle itself. This was done because the dirtiness and defilement of their sins over the last year had made this place unfit to worship God in holiness, so God had to make it holy again. Along the way, there were these events. Um, with these events, the high priest took the scapegoat, that one goat of the two that was allowed to live. He would place his two hands on the goat. This symbolized the sins of the people being transferred to the goat, and then the goat was led away into the wilderness, never to be seen by the people ever again. It was left in the wilderness there to live out its days and die. Now, I'm turning right now in my Bible to the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 2. I'm going to read verses 5 to 8 here in a moment because these verses are so key for us in the New Testament era, and here's why. Let me read them for you. If they say this, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross." In Leviticus 16, the high priest laid aside his glorious robes and put on the clothes of a servant. He did this because he had to humble himself as a sin offerer for the nation. Well, our Savior, the eternal second member of the Godhead, God the Son, laid aside his glorious appearance and took on himself the body of a normal human being. He became a servant, Philippians 2, 8 says, and Jesus humbled himself and was obedient. And how obedient? He was obedient unto death, even cross death. Now, before going to the cross, there in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed this, I sanctify myself that they, the believers in him, that they also might be sanctified. Well, the high priest sanctified himself to take animal blood into the presence of God to sanctify the Jews for a year. Jesus set himself apart to take his own blood before God the Father so that he could sanctify forever those that trust in him. Oh, my friend. You cannot gain entrance into heaven unless you have been sanctified. You've been set apart by the blood of Christ. To be set apart means that you have been set apart to or for a purpose. And that purpose is not to please yourself, but to please him who saves you from sin. Have you done that? You know you're a sinner. You need forgiveness. You cannot gain heaven without a Savior, without being cleansed from your sin. You must be set apart for heaven, and that can only happen when your high priest, the high priest, Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, is allowed to pay for your sins by his shed blood. You need his shed blood. Your sin is that awful. Receive Jesus as your Savior today, right now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.